Hello, Nikki Does here with another IBM Selectric video. I'd like to talk about what some of the subsystems of this thing do. <laughs> Look, oil. <laughs> uh, this one is one that I tore down as a hobby to see if I can make everything work in it. And I've got a lot of it working so far, but come with me as we talk about how this thing chooses between capital and small letters. Capital, small, capital, small, capital, small. Look at that, the ball. The ball, and it is a mechanical computer. There's a great video by the engineer guy where he talks about this wiffle tree mechanism right down in here that converts these keys, these character presses, all these are the, the levers that come from the keyboard, converts that to a, an analog motion of this ball, tilt and rotate. So what we're going to talk about for shift is all about the rotation. And let's take a look here just for fun. We'll see we've got a backward L, a T, and a, an N, L, T, and N. And these are all capital. There are no smalls back here. So let's press the shift button and I'm gonna lock it. And if you notice, we have an L, T, and N again, but this time they are in small letters. So now the capital letters are facing the platen, the paper, and the small letters are facing the typist. This rotate selection computer can only select from the forward 180 degrees of the type ball. So when we shift or unshift, we are changing the character set from capital and small and the, the similar symbols that go with that. I believe that's a one quarter it is that's a one quarter right there i can barely see it for real but you can see it better on the screen and that should then be a one half which it is and if we look over here we've got a one quarter and one half key on the keyboard okay so that's the the, the magic here is that we flip the ball around 180 degrees now how does that actually happen how is that happening. Well, if you've seen anything about these typewriters, they have two very thin metal tapes. So they're bands or tapes, and you can see it right here, and it's quite thin. One of these is the tilt tape, and one is the rotate tape. And the only one we're going to pay attention to right now is the rotate tape, which is the one that's vertical. And when I say vertical, I mean this pulley right here, get my pointing screwdriver, this pulley is vertical, the band runs up and down, it goes around the pulley and runs up and down, whereas the tilt tape is this one over here that the band runs side by side. So if I were to give this, and be careful if you do this, because you can break these tapes quite easily, if I give this a little pull, you'll see it's tilting, and if I give this vertical one a little bit of a tug, you can see it starts to rotate. So um, how do we get a half a rotation? Well, that all happens on this side. And if we see this pulley over here, it's this pulley right down here, the vertical one. Uh, let me point again with my screwdriver right there. It's mounted onto an arm. And that arm is the shift arm. When I press shift, voila, you can see the arm moves in and out. And it moves in and out by quite a precise amount that gets you 180 degrees of rotation on the ball. And that precise amount can be set using, partially by using that adjustment right here. If you're at all familiar with an IBM Selectric, you'll know that there are about a billion adjustments in this thing. Okay, so this right here is a face cam that I'm touching, and this is a cam follower. So watch as I go from shift to unshift. See how that part rotates? This part rotates and brings it out. So we're going to turn off the, the motor inside and we'll shift it manually this time. So let's, okay, so it's free right now. This is turning the axle, the shaft, as if the motor was turning it. Now, if I press the shift once, it'll lock. Now, as I turn it, you'll see the cam turn with it, bring out the shift arm and it'll go right back again because I pressed shift and released it. But if I come over here and press shift lock, 
Now the cam will grab one time. It'll bring it out and it'll release while it's still shifted. Now if I press the shift to release it, watch right down here. Do you see that pop in there, that clutch? Now that black plastic wheel will turn. It'll re lower the cam again to zero and then release. Now it's free. Shift lock. It clicked right here, giving me one half turn of the cam. There it is back out. Now it's shifted. Now, of course, there's quite a bit of detail to this, uh, to how it works. And I'll show you one thing I just find fascinating about this. And bear with me while I flip this mechanism up so we can see the bottom of it. Now, what if you're an, an, a fast typist, and there sure are and were a lot of fast typists, and you were to press the shift key while uh, you were typing. So while this thing was in the, the uh, process of rotating 180 degrees, you picked some characters. Well, it turns out that during that short interval, the keyboard is locked, and I'll show you how that happens too. Okay, so right here, every time you press a key, this gold, silvery gold set of rods moves forward or back. And what it does is it unlocks the clutch that types out a key. So if you stop this thing from moving, um, it has to move up. So if you stop this thing from moving up, it won't type a key. So if I, if I release this right here, there's a tiny tab back. It's a lot of stuff to follow in this thing, I gotta say. So there's a tiny tab right back here right there if I pull if I pull on this if I pull this toward me toward the bottom you'll see it will go straight up okay so that's ready to type a character if I push it down it'll lock if I pull this back out it'll go up so if it's up like this and the motor were running it would type a character let's try that all right so here we go each time I pull this it's going to type a character Okay, so if I'm to press shift, notice this little piece right here. Now that is, has a, there's an arc on this lever and there's a little interlock right there. And while I'm pressing shift, that interlock's going to go in. Now it happens too fast while the, the motor's running, so let's try it with just pressing the shift key. And I'll manually turn this. Do you see that go in there now? So right now, the interlock is in the way of that. If I pulled this out, it doesn't go up. But as soon as the shift cycle finishes and it gets into shift, it pops back out. There it is. Now remember, I pressed shift and released it, so it shifted and unshifted. That's why you saw that move twice. Now if I pull this out, it'll go up and lock and work to type a character. So let's lock that back down. That's trying to type a character right now. There we go. So now it's locked down. I'll do the shift lock. So you'll see it only happens once. Here it comes, I'm gonna turn it, it's shifting. Now it's fully shifted and it moved out of the way. Is that not fascinating? I just find all that amazing how that works. Sheesh, it's incredible. I mean, software is incredible for sure, but that is a lot of amazing mechanism. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the IBM Selectric shift mechanism. If you have other parts of the Selectric that you'd like to know about, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.